As the world knows, in 2020, on the ballot was Proposition 14 in California. It passed, and as a result of that, the groundbreaking work of the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, a state agency, will continue. Proposition 14 is bringing an additional $5.5 billion to this critical organization. It's accelerating stem cell research and translating it into potential cures. Okay, who was behind Prop 14? Who would have the audacity to put this on the ballot, especially in 2004, Prop 71 created the original $3 billion in state funding. They said it could never be done, but the Klein family of Bob Klein and Daniel Klein and Bob's son, Rob Klein, worked tirelessly to conceptualize Proposition 14, procure the leadership, secure the ballot signatures, place this on the ballot, and passed it. Monumental advocacy. And it's for that reason, the Leadership and Advocacy Award in 2021 goes to the Klein family. They provided the essential leadership. Bob and Danielle served as co-chairs and Rob served as president of the campaign. They got the job done when it, everyone said it couldn't be done, but there was usually a hesitancy. If anyone was gonna get it done, it was gonna be the Klein family. We were honored to present honorable speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, Alzheimer's and stem cell advocates, Seth Rogan and Lauren Rogan and STEMI the stem cell. As Speaker of the House, I'm honored to extend congratulations to Bob, Danielle and Rob for this hard earned and richly deserved leadership award from the Regenerative Medicine Foundation. For the last two decades, you have harnessed your powerful voices and brilliant minds to pioneer stem cell research in California, and now I'm pleased to see Rob's new generation of leadership in this important mission acknowledged. Indeed, it was your hard work on Prop 71 that launched the vital California Institute for Regenerative Medicine and secured billions in new funding with Prop 14 on the ballot last November, a truly remarkable feat. And under your visionary leadership, the Institute has been on the cutting edge of stem cell research for nearly 20 years, pushing the limits of science toward new treatments and cures. That you and Danielle have been honored and robbed too with this prestigious award is a testament to your lasting impact. Your work will improve the lives of countless patients in California, across the country, and around the world. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Beers, Bob's fierce advocacy on behalf of California's families. In the 1970s, are you in school? What was that? He successfully lobbied the state legislature to establish the California High Housing Finance Agency, which has helped finance the construction of affordable housing all across our state. Bob, Danielle, and Rob, I cannot wait to see what you do next to advance the public good. Congratulations again and best wishes for a wonderful celebration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Seth Rogan. And I'm Lauren Miller Rogan. I've been the Alzheimer's patient advocate on the board of the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine since 2014. And in that time, I've gotten a front row seat to the incredible and literally life-changing work that CIRM has done. And I've heard about it all when she comes home from the meetings. And yes, we are both overwhelmed by it all. But we are able to understand that because of the tremendous work Bob, Danielle, and Rob have done, the state of California has become a leader in groundbreaking science. The Kleins pulled off a truly remarkable feat of patient advocacy and public policy with the passage of Prop 14 to secure $5.5 billion for stem cell and related research that will make a difference for patients everywhere. And that was after they'd already done it with Prop 71 in 2004. Prop 71 and CIRM have been central to the evolution of this field, which in a relatively short period of time for science, just 15 years, has arrived at a juncture at which we have hundreds of clinical trials happening nationally, more than 90 in California alone. That means 
we are getting even closer to FDA-approved treatments and cures that we need for diseases that have been confounding us for generations. As patient advocates ourselves who lost a beloved family member to one of these confounding diseases, we could not be prouder to honor Bob Klein along with Danielle and Rob tonight as they receive the 2021 Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine Action Leadership Award. Congratulations, Bob, Danielle, and Rob, from us, from our families. From STEMI to STEM Cell, that is me, and on behalf of the patients for whom you've made such an incredible difference. Thank you. Hi, I'm STEMI the Stem Cell. I have the power to regenerate and repair the body. I have the potential to cure diseases and keep you healthy. Basically, I'm the tiniest yet mightiest superhero on the planet, possibly the entire galaxy. And when I'm teaming up with the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine to fund stem cell research and treatment development, I feel invincible. As long as Prop 14 brings me more funds. I've increased motor function for quadriplegics. I've helped blind people regain sight. I've helped type 1 diabetics make their own insulin. I cured the fatal bubble baby disease. Pretty incredible stuff, right? Well, there's more and it'll blow your socks off. CIRM funds important medical discoveries. Medical discoveries are the foundation of finding and making treatments and cures. CIRM funding helps bring life-saving treatments to the market. I don't want to brag, but I help cancer patients a lot. CIRM recognizes that students are our future, so they actively support our youngsters with grants and paid internships. Bringing the world's best minds together means exceptional results, so CIRM brings lots of grants to new faculty. CIRM is building a better world for all of us. 17 instrumental institutes, centers, and clinics were built with CIRM funding. Now that is impressive. CIRM has a major positive impact on California's economy. Tens of thousands of jobs have been created and billions in economic stimulus generated. I am speechless, but I'm not. I'm going to keep talking. Can you believe CIRM accomplished all of this in less than 14 years? Imagine what CIRM could accomplish with just 10 more years of funding for stem cell research and treatment development. We could significantly increase the chances of finding cures and treatments for degenerative diseases. We can directly impact the future of your overall health. We can continue funding medical research. We can help discover a treatment or cure for devastating diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, and Parkinson's. We will bring more economic prosperity and jobs to the state of California. Remember this November, vote yes on Prop 14 for the funding I need, you know, so I can save the world and stuff. Thank you. I love you. STEMI signing off to go treat a patient in need. Saving the world one stem cell at a time. Visit yeson14.com for more mind-blowing information. Thank you. I want to thank the organizations that are sponsoring this award on behalf of our family. Our family is a family of advocates each coming to patient advocacy for medical research and therapies from a different passionate uh, commitment through a, a, another person who suffered, whether it's a member of our family or another family. I wanted to also thank the entire coalition, but we're gonna break that up between members of our family it's a monumental task to pass a, an initiative in California for $5.5 billion for stem cell research and genomic research and therapy development. It takes the civic society and the scientific society uh, and the patient advocates as well as the government of the state coming together as a coalition. Specifically, though, I should call out that Senator Art Torres, a former state senator who is now vice chairman of the governing board of the state funding agency, committed two years of his life as an executive co-chair of this campaign. And the governor endorsed this initiative. Uh, the lieutenant governor endorsed it. Uh, Secretary of State P Padilla, now a U.S. senator, endorsed this initiative on the executive branch side and on the federal level, Nancy Pelosi provided a powerful endorsement. It's a coalition backed by the government, but supported and driven by patient groups and universities, uh, by independent institutes like the Salk Institute or the City of Hope. And 
Tonight, in just a couple of minutes, we hope to thank some of those uh, leading groups as examples of this tremendous coalition. But I would like to specifically focus on the fact that we owe all of this to the people of California, because the California voter is a visionary voter, a voter who is looking to change the world, to change the suffering that's been with us from chronic disease for centuries for the millennia, to find a better vision for tomorrow. I entered this with a son suffering from type one diabetes uh, that threatened his life every day. I entered this with a mother who had Alzheimer's. They've both passed away. But for our families who continue for the future, for our children's children, we have a voter group in California that in the middle of a pandemic, when the economics of the future for their own family are threatened and the state's economy is threatened, they will come out in a historic number to vote and pass this initiative. This initiative passed with the greatest vote in, in numbers, eight and a half million yes votes in the history of any initiative in the United States of America. It is remarkable and a testament to the people of California, to the scientists who have driven this research and therapy development to the point we have 12 FDA breakthrough designations, to the point where we have phase two trials where we're demonstrating dramatically that children without, born without immune systems, that young men or women who are paralyzed by accidents, that older citizens who are blinded by age-related macular degeneration or younger citizens that are blinded by genetic forms of blindness, we are, through the science led by California, through stem cell research and genomics, treating cancer, heart disease, diabetes, in a way that mitigates this suffering and changes the future of medicine. So thank you, California, and thank you, as we will say today, through my wife and through my son, <coughs> uh, a great thanks to all of those who made this happen. My wife, who began way before I did with medical advocacy, and my son, Robert, who ran this campaign all of its consultants, all of the consulting governmental relationships and civic relationships and communications. We have many to thank, too many to thank today, but it will be a start and we humbly accept this award on behalf of all of them. Thank you. Good evening. As my husband mentioned, our family has had a long standing commitment to scientific research. In fact, in the early 80s, I had the honor of working with Children's Hospital on funding bone marrow transplants. But science takes a long time. That said, all of us have lived through this recent pandemic. and We've also had the good fortune to witness the benefits of shared vision and scientific collaboration. California voters understood that. In 2004 and then again in 2020, California voters voted to accelerate scientific research and empowered collaboration. We are living through a historic time. Tonight, our family is honored to be here with you because of your commitment to scientific research and because of the commitment of the California voters. On behalf of our family and on behalf of the patients and patient advocates everywhere, thank you for making medical miracles possible. I'd like to introduce you to a video made by Alicia Vaccaro. It is about her daughter, Evie and it actually demonstrates medical miracles. Thank you. Evangelina was diagnosed at six weeks old with SCID, that stands for Severe Combined Immunodeficiency, and that means she had no immune system and any illness, virus, bacteria, or fungus could potentially kill her. There was this new gene therapy trial at UCLA, and she started chemo, 
and they took out her stem cells and they genetically modified those stem cells and put them back in her. And within three weeks of starting that process, a little bit before Christmas, Dr. Cohn at UCLA came and told us it's working. When you see your kid living, and this is the kid that you saw get the blood transfusions, get the chemo, and have this now functioning immune system is an amazing gift. Please vote yes on Proposition 14. This was an especially challenging campaign due to the extraordinary nature of an election held during a unparalleled pandemic, which added complication and difficulty to nearly every element of the effort. COVID-19 made it extremely difficult just to gather the signatures necessary to qualify for the ballot. While we had many visionary donors for which we are eternally grateful, funding was largely hard to come by due to an incredible economic unpredictability and a record-breaking political fundraising season. Many of the major news outlets had little bandwidth for in-depth analysis of, much less attention for, anything beyond COVID and an especially contentious election cycle at every level from state government to the presidency. There was an inability to travel and to canvas door to door. Traditional methods of engagement were groundbreakingly expensive, from TV to internet to common mailers, with media spending eclipsing $1 billion from initiatives alone in California. There was a nationally resounding focus on cutting budgets and enacting general austerity measures. We were able to triumph despite these challenges due to an unequaled coalition of hardworking and dedicated patient advocates. We cannot overstate the difference made by our supporters, driven by their vision and commitment to for the fight to better treat and one day cure chronic disease and illness. We would like to begin by thanking Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Governor Gavin Newsom, Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis, State Senate President Tony Atkins, Mayors Garcetti, Licardo, and Steinberg, and many others throughout the state, the University of California Board of Regents, and hundreds of other elected officials, community leaders, Nobel Prize winners, scientists, public figures, cultural groups, research and academic organizations, and chambers of commerce throughout the state. Our tireless campaign team, including Senator Art Torres, Melissa King, Mitra Hoosman, Anna Maybach, Jacqueline Hantkin, Don Reed, David Serrano Sewell, and our friend and close ally, Dr. Larry Goldstein. Our talented and valuable consultants, Winner and Mandebach, Fiona Hutton and Associates, Basque Digital Media, FM3 and Associates, James Harrison and Olson Renko, and many others that lent their professional expertise to helping ensure victory. The dedicated and indispensable staff at CIRM, without whom the agency could have never realized the immensely compelling successes that surpassed all expectations. The governing board of the agency, many of whom contributed significant amounts of their personal time in communicating the importance of continuing the research, and of course, the brilliant CIRM grantees doing groundbreaking research and developing novel therapies that are already saving lives. We would like to especially thank our Patient Advocacy Coalition, who lent us their time, access to their membership, and their hard-earned credibility, which helped earn us the trust and consequentially the support of the voters of the state of California. They include JDRF International, the American Association for Cancer Research, the American Diabetes Association, the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research, Beyond Type 1, the International Society for Stem Cell Research, Research America, HFC for Alzheimer's Research, the Regenerative Medicine Foundation, and the over 100 other patient advocacy and medical research advocacy groups that helped spread our message and convince voters of the value of continuing this critical research. It is this great coalition that made the victory possible. During the most challenging initiative campaign season in state history, especially for a bond initiative. We are humbled and honored for this recognition and for this award, but those were the true heroes of the campaign. And we will be eternally grateful for the extraordinary efforts to give scientific research the support it needs to one day conquer chronic disease and illness. From all of us and patients and their families everywhere, thank you.